But back to Archbishop Cushing. He wouldn't be a cardinal until Pope John named him in 1958. Cushing had had a personal experience that weighed more than the doctrine that he was sworn to uphold. There's the point. What Reinhold Niebuhr called the triumph of experience over dogma. Cushing's <laughs> experience, one assumes, went something like this. If I love Dick Pearlstein as I do, then God must love Dick too. Therefore, therefore, no eternal fire for Dick. An ethical insight. How, pre how Feeney's preaching was a grotesque offense against charity led to a theological change. A decade later, Cushing bought his, what he had by then learned to call, ecumenical impulse to completion at the Second Vatican Council as one of the leading figures to make the case for the 1965 declaration, Dignitatis Humanae, which formally overturned no salvation outside the church in favor of the idea that every person can attain salvation who acts according to the dictates of conscience. It would be oversimple to say that a personal experience like Cushing's should trump dogma in every case since norms, laws, and established ideas aim to enshrine the wisdom and moral principle that human beings have come to before us. Conscience is always the primary realm of ethical choice, but doctrines are measures against which conscience must be tested. Still, the modern affirmation of the individual of conscience of experience posed a direct challenge to the authority of doctrine. How do I know that I exist? Not because the church tells me. Not because even God tells me. I think, therefore, I am. I know I exist because I know. Not only awareness of self as the ground of personhood but self-awareness as the ground of self-respect and dignity of every individual. This idea of the Enlightenment took flight in America, where these truths were held to be self-evident. Such emphasis on the individual together with corollaries like inbred rights, religious pluralism, separation of church and state, all of this was part of what had thrown the great Catholic Church on the defensive by the Reformation and by the Enlightenment and by the revolutions of the 19th century and therefore had caused the Catholic Church to lump such ideas together and label them as, yes, heresy. The heresy, indeed, of Americanism, which the Vatican condemned in 
1899. By then, however, in its war against the modern spirit, Catholic Church teachings had become calcified, and doctrine had become doctrinaire. Some of us remember, and if you think there is defensiveness in the Catholic Church today, look, compared to Feeney, Pope Benedict is Dr. Phil. <laughs> did, acting out of the American experience, was to help the church, the whole church, leave that defensiveness behind. It is not too much to say that Dimitatis Humane, whose principal author was Cushing's protege, Father John Courtney Murray, was the Catholic embrace of Americanism. You embraced it. And look at you. You're all right. <laughs> Anthony Padovano properly acknowledged the European roots of Catholic reform, and we just had this magnificent invitation from our colleague, a wonderful manifestation of those European roots. And who embodies those roots of reform more brilliantly than the great Hans Kuhn. But these roots are particularly American, too, and that has special meaning for us. So also that the prophetic word that we heard from Dr. Jeanette Rodriguez, the fulfillment of the American and Catholic impulse in Latina and Latino experience, from these multiple sources comes the impulse toward reform, to be elaborated upon later by Matthew Fox and the indispensable John Chichester. But here's the point. These roots planted themselves, sprouted, and grew in the experience of the laity. Archbishop Cushing, was influenced, compelled, to take his decisive act by Dolly. Dolly is the Rosa Parks of Catholic reform. It was millions of dollars and dicks all over the Catholic world who set in motion the dogmatic revolution of the Council. From the mundane experience of sexuality and family life to the new meaning of belief in the age of disbelief, Lay experience, female and male, was religiously transformative. This was obviously so in America, where lay people were at the forefront of the encounter with those who believe differently or not at all, which requires change in everyone's belief. If I may presume to say so, all of us here in, this, in Detroit, including this is truly presumptuous of me, our guests from Europe, our Americanists, as my mother was with her live and let live. And isn't that the point of our gathering? To say simply, the profound religious shift toward pluralism and tolerance and liberty of conscience that defines our national identity and our modern awareness will not be undone by anyone's anathema. From 1899 to 1960,
1965 to 2011, from heresy to hope. Isn't that the journey we are on? This contest between dogmatism and experience may have climaxed in the Feeney affair, but it, it has been going on at least since the trial of Galileo. The paradigmatic case of doctrine being defended against tested and testable experience. If the earth can be shown to move around the sun, neither unaided eyes nor Ptolemy's schema, nor even the scripture itself can say otherwise. Galileo was forced by the Inquisition to recant, to say the earth does not move. But as you know, he famously muttered under his breath, even while being forced to his denial, but it moves. In 1992, Pope John Paul II acknowledged that the Church was wrong to oppose Galileo. But as we all know too well, the spirit of Catholic virginity that condemned Galileo is not dead. The Galileo case repeats itself and repeats itself and repeats itself. Yet experience, and here's the point, will not be denied. I am a Catholic because within this tradition, I am continually given ways to say out loud, it moves. Christ's killer slander was repudiated 
in the Vatican II Declaration Nostra Aetate. And so was the idea that the religion of Jews who rejected Jesus was rejected by God. Once again, Cushing, no doubt thinking of his brother-in-law, played a leading role in getting Nostra Aetate approved. Nostra Aetate amounts to the largest doctrinal shift in the history of the Christian Church. Nostra Aetate overturns the Gospel of John. And it occurred because of the inescapable experience that was had in the heart of Europe in the middle of the 20th century.